start the recording. There we go. So now we're recording. Um, so this particular uh, quick guide webinar uh, is on managing your inbox. Um, I will tell you that the email tool, I've said this and you probably have heard this from others who are using my courses, is the Achilles heel of this product. It is um, challenging and it takes some um, getting used to, but, but one of the things that is really important is how you manage your inbox. And the reason for that is that your inbox in my courses is a global inbox, meaning that it isn't course specific. So if I can show you, for example, if I go into my sandbox course and you look at these updates and it says I have five new emails, that does not mean I have five new emails in my, my sandbox training course. If I go back home and go to a different course, you'll notice it'll still say I have five new emails. Those five new emails mean that I could have three emails in, in this quick guides course, I can have two emails in this course, I can have four in here, one in here, I can have three or two, two and one. So you don't really know necessarily where these emails are coming from unless uh, the student has not deleted out the beginning of the subject line where it will have uh, what course code you're in. So when you go to your inbox, you're going to see emails from all of your courses. After you're done reading those, those emails, it's real important to get rid of them out of the inbox and put them into a nice organized folder structure. And that's what I'm going to show you today. It's kind of the way that I think is the best way, but you may have a different way, which is fine, but it's just important to organize that. And then I actually will go into my email in my faculty account, because this, uh, this is my demo faculty account, where I can show you that my inbox is clean. The other reason that you want to try to keep your inbox clean and organized is that over the semesters, we are not going to be archiving stuff off of D2L. So if you don't keep your inbox clean, uh, you will end up with probably with one, two, or three thousand messages over the next three or four years, if not more. You may have that many messages in one semester from all of your classes. So again, organizing, keeping the inbox clean is the most wonderful thing that you can do. So to do that, you click. the best way is you click on the email uh, alert icon on the mini bar and just go to your email. And you'll see a folder structure here. And by default, it'll have an inbox, the sent mail, your draft, the trash, and this address book. And you'll get to see, again, a listing of all emails from all of the courses you're teaching on. And what I'm going to try to have you do and try to think about is to create a folder structure so that it becomes organized and then move the specific um, emails into those specific folders. So to begin with, I'm going to click on this folder management button and I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. And what I'm going to create is folders for each of my semesters. So for example, it's 0490. Um, you could use, you know, fall 2014, whatever you want. I'm using the codes that, of course, PeopleSoft gives us and that we're kind of used to. And then I'm going to go ahead and click save. And then you'll notice that that creates a folder over here. But I'm not done. What I want to then do is create another new folder, but I want to nest it. I want to put it underneath this 0490. So I'm going to click on New Folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to name my folder. For example, I teach CGS 1100. And let's say my class number is 1234. Then I'm going to create a folder for that class with that number. Now again, your naming convention can be whatever you want to make sense for you. But I think what's important is that you be consistent in the naming. What's real important is that when you name that, that particular course, you choose this parent folder and you put it inside of the 0495 or 0490. And now you'll see a little plus on here 
And this then lets me see all the courses that I have. So now what I'm going to do is create another folder. And maybe I teach another CGS 1100 class with, three, with this class number. And then I'm going to go ahead and put that, oops, not under draft, under 0490 and save that. So in other words, what you should be doing at the beginning of each semester is you create the semester and then you put underneath of that each of the courses that you're teaching. And again, you just don't put the course number, the name, because then if you don't know what section it is, then that becomes a problem. So that to me is the first way of organizing your folders. Then what I'm going to go ahead to do is go back to the message list, or I can go back, click on inbox. So now, if I need to move a specific, uh, a specific um, email, uh, what I do is when I click on this, the email from the student and I read it, so I'm reading the message, and I go through and I reply, you know, I then go ahead and send that message. What I do in the next step is not leave here. I just don't close this. I click up here where it says move to and I'll put it into the appropriate um, folder for that specific course and I click close. Now it'll look like it didn't disappear but it really did. It really is in that folder and if I click on that folder right here you'll see that there is the email from Ned Stark. So if I choose, uh, let's say I'm going to go read this one. Oh, that's not a good example, sorry. Let's choose this one. And you'll notice that, of course, these don't have my course name, but you'll notice in the subject line where it has the brackets, when a student uh, initiates an email or when you initiate an email, it will automatically put your course ID in the brackets right there. So that's how you know what course it is. That's why the section number becomes important. And again, after I you know, reply to them, I then choose to put it in, I know it's extra steps, but it really helps a great deal. Now, if you want to move, if you don't want to do that and you just want to wait until you get them all done, I can checkbox whatever folders I, or whatever emails I want, and then in the move to here, I can put them into that space there. So now, the next semester comes along, what do I do? Well, again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and choose folder management. I go to new folder. I'm going to create the next class number, or the next, uh, I'm sorry, semester. I click save. I go new. And again, I, you know, maybe I'm teaching CGS 1100 like that. And again, I put it in that parent folder. So I do have to set up the folders each semester, but I'm telling you it will be a lifesaver. Because what can happen is this, as the semester goes along, as, the, as your years go along, this fills up. Now I can search for a student, I can also filter, but it's really best to try to keep this inbox as clean as possible. Because if you have a student who has a dispute or you want to figure out what, what the student sent to you and what your responses were, instead of me having to go through the search or through the filter, I can immediately click on that folder. I can see the list right here. I can immediately search in this area knowing that it's going to be just that particular student. And then if I click on the email, if everything is done right, it will have um, their original message, my reply back to them, and I can see the whole thread. So organizing your email and keeping your inbox clean is really important. So I'm going to go ahead and log into um, with my actual faculty account here. And you'll see I actually have an email from one of my students. If I go to the email, go to email to come on. You'll notice that my inbox is really clean. You'll notice that I have my I taught last semester, so here's all of my emails from my 1146 class, 
and you can see I was able to see what the class number was right inside of there. Here's my emails from this semester, from my first eight weeks, and again, um, you know, the student didn't delete out the subject line. So when, when you go to compose an email, and by the way, this is not the best way to compose an email from the email tool, and you'll see that the subject isn't there. Sorry, I have to go a different way. Um, but you'll notice this student, she deleted out, and here's the subject. So how would I know what class this is coming from? Well, you'll see where it says show course offerings, and that's another way for me to know that this was coming from my 1958 class, my class number 1958. That's just another thing that you can determine by that. What I want to show you is if I go into my class, and I'm going to go to communication and class list, because if you're ever going to originate any emails, you always do it from the class list. If you're originating emails to the student, this is the best, most efficient way of sending emails. And all I have to do is click on the student's name, and there it is. And you'll notice that this information is automatically populated there. And I'm not going to delete it because that's how I know what class this is coming from. From the student's perspective, the student has a module called Email Instructor, and the student would click on this. This is how they email you, and they click here, and again, that is automatically going to be populated. So hopefully the student doesn't delete it, and that's how you know what class this is coming from. Otherwise, it becomes very difficult. And again, managing your email, managing the inbox so it stays clean and it, you organize things and you put things away um, is going to save you a lot of heartache in the long run and um, a lot of stress. Otherwise, this email tool will cause you stress. So essentially, that is it for this quick guide. Any questions that you may have? Again, you can unmute yourself and ask away. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, so once you put them in the folders, then you go back to the original emails and do you delete them? No. The, the emails are automatically moved. Oh, they just automatically move. Okay. Yeah. So they'll be moved out of the out of the. Um, inbox and into that specific folder. Because I thought when you moved it in, I didn't see where it had been removed. Right. So it doesn't by default. So if I click on here, uh, minimize. All right. So I, I'm going to respond to this later. But let's say I'm going to click right here. I'm going to go ahead and move it. And I click close. So it doesn't look like it has moved. If right. I click refresh, it's really not there. Oh, okay, thanks. So once you go back out, I mean, that's one of the things, and in the quick guide I talk about that, that if you do it from after you reply, then it doesn't. I'll, I'll mention one other thing is that uh, the sent box, um, this I don't play around with. I, I, have, I know I have a vet tech faculty that I work with who, um, who, ha who does do this with his inbox also. Um, I, I just don't. Because in my mind, again, what, like I said, if I click um, inside of here, and if I look at, for example, this message here, you'll see that here's, um, you know, this is what I wrote back to the student. You know, I, so, and this is what the student responded back to me. So the thread of the conversation will be there um, by default. So, because the sent box can be another really strange place. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things you could do with the sent box, and I've seen this done, is, you know, that they, somebody will go into the folder management and they'll create another folder and call it, you know, uh, sent mail and put it inside of there, for example. And then at the end of the semester, They'll go into the sent and checkbox the top checkbox. Well, again, you'd have to, you know, look at this. I choose 200 emails. I already have three pages. 
So out of two semesters, I already have over 600 emails, oh, oh, less than 600 emails, but I have a lot of emails. But I would check box the top check box and I can move that into my sent mail for that semester. Maybe call it something else than sent mail. But I, personally, I, I'm not going to mess around with the sent mail, but you can if you want. Any other questions? And, and Nancy, if you have a question, I know the computer that's outside of there doesn't have a mic. Don't worry, Alan, you can hear me. <laughs> so I can hear Nancy through my door. Why don't you come in, Nancy? <laughs> Why don't you come into my office? If you have a question. Oh, okay. She doesn't have a question. <laughs> Got it. Anybody else? Nope. All righty. So again, just one last thing, again, just to reiterate, if you don't remember where the quick guides are, spcollege.edu, OLS, slash OLS. And if you mouse over my courses, you'll see the quick guides there, and the recorded sessions are next to that. So again, this is where all the quick guides reside. Um, so that you can go and print them out. You'll notice that there are now some up on, on Gradebook. As I get them done, I am adding them uh, to this uh, area. And uh, come January, we'll ramp up again with these Quick Guide webinars, doing more on the other things like Gradebook and quizzes and those kinds of things. So keep an eye out for your email for those. And again, if there's no other questions, I appreciate your time and um, have a good rest of the day. Thanks, Ellen. You're welcome. Oh,